Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. I'm going to look at uh, Mark Teixeira Sabretooth miniseries from 1993. But first, I want to invite everybody to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel. Uh, hit the bell icon below this video to be notified when we post new videos. That'll help mitigate the kayfabe effect. A lot of uh, We hear from a lot of viewers who they see a comic on here, decide they're going to go track it down, and guess what? They're harder to find after these videos. So if you hit that bell, you'll be notified as soon as the video goes up. It'll give you a little bit of a leg up in the uh, race to track down some of these issues. I don't think you'll have trouble with Sabretooth <laughs> because they printed a lot of these. Um, but also let the video play through to the end. What that does is helps YouTube uh, then share the video with other comics fans who may not be familiar with Cartoonist Kayfabe. And that is how we grow this channel with your help. So uh, that's something you can do to, uh, to help us reach some new viewers. But... I have been wanting to uh, to dive into Sabretooth here. I've been wanting to look at Mark Texiera's work. Yeah. And I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, to be honest, so I'll call him Tex. But the, there's the baseball player, it's Te Teixeira. Yeah, so, if his last name is Teixeira, he does himself no favors signing his name Tex. Yes, but uh, he does us lots of favor by making comics that, especially in the early 90s, did not look like the, the clean, nice uh, pen hatching that we would see with a lot of the image, the Rob Liefelds, the Jim Lees, the Scott Williams. Um, this stuff felt very different to me, and I dug that. Absolutely. Uh, I Pictures, have... The dumbest gimmick cover for a die cut. <laughs> <laughs> Just anything that can make a thing cost a couple cents yes, exactly. more to, to the consumer. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, man. But uh, his methods and materials, uh, his use of extra media is incredible mm -hmm. uh like we got these painted covers um i know this dude uh dr dr uh, revolt who who uh created the yo mtv raps logo he he uh came up through high school with mark tex and they both spent time at continuity studios mm -hmm. that man. makes a lot of sense so when you see a lot of the some of this line work uh has a little bit of that vibe but the cool thing about tex is that he's not like a derivative like a lot of those people that would that would draw those continuity comics it might as well have been you know Neil Adams on a bad day kind of comics this has some of that spirit but he's clearly an individual and this is what we're here for right here. This is here. totally it. Is there anything better than a just roided out uh, <laughs> main figure here surrounded by ninjas attacking? Super tapered waist, giant upper body that looks like it could not be supported. Like, like, <laughs> like you know, there you, you hear about certain ladies, man, that, that have back problems. Uh, you know, because they have to might have some back problems. But, it, but the lower back <laughs> instead of the upper back. Like this right here is... Uh, being stressed while he's walking around. And as if it's not enough, your guy has claws coming out and sharp teeth. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I would put him in the camp at the time. Like, I, I discover Tex on Ghost Rider is where I, I first see him. He's Absolutely. around way before that. You know, I think he might even go all the way back to, like, those Masters of Universe mini comics, maybe. Yeah, I don't know about that, but he's definitely a part of the new Did universe. Hex, would do Hex at DC in the early 80s. So definitely a guy that's around for a while. But in the early 90s, like, he did a run on Wolverine. He would do Punisher War Journal. And I just love these kind of, like, you know, ridiculous. At this point, I think he's doing his image version. Did Union for Image. But you see, like, the just absurd cartoon oversized guns. And the high rendering, a little bit of uh, like you mentioned continuity, Samurai, a little bit. Of, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, Bill Sienkiewicz, man, Electra, Electra Assassin, kind of thing. like yes, you know, those, that big ass gun comes from that. It's a good call. And what you would see are these like almost organic inking processes. A lot of hatching. You can see like the arm hairs and stuff. It was just completely different again than like the Scott Williams very controlled. Like these are perfectly smooth lines that I'm going to hatch this guy's double lighting with. You know, in this case, it is that Sienkiewicz scratchy, loose, organic shapes. And I responded, man. I, I thought it looked really cool in terms of, like, your lighting and everything. You'll see a lot of these kind of heavily hatched faces. Um, but also, it was just different. It all makes sense, too. Like, like the lines, they're, they're not really there. And now no we get reason. into uh, some really cool stuff. Like, I like this coloring. I guess I should round out your credits for, for the book. Larry Hama is writing it, who was the writer of Wolverine at the time. And uh, Steve Bucciolato is your colorist. Richard Starking's letter. But I love this kind of choice for, I mean, blue. Like, it's such an unnatural color. A lot of cool choices. colors. And this sequence is his, like, psychic that goes into his head to try to whatever you know this is a tormented character i don't love this story so i'm not going to follow too closely with that but it does allow for certain visuals is like we're getting into his head and you see crazy faces coming out and and weird memories showing up 
almost psychedelic. Yeah. You know, these kind of like super close up of the eyeball. I love it. Maybe this will be worth showing off. Oh, real yeah. Quick. Jimmy, like, here's Mark Tech sitting in the bullpen doing a kayfabe kind of photo shoot, sitting there uh, penciling. And look a how splash. loose the pencils are. He's inking himself, so you get very loose pencils. Yeah. And then. This this was so important to me, man. Like see, like just seeing that stuff, seeing brushes and things, and and uh, if you see that final page, like it's just such uh, scratchy scratchy lines. Like I think they have the final printed page. Yeah. If you, I love the uh, the color guides, super vivid. Yeah, shouts to Greg Wright, man. He's a kayfaber. And there's your finished, you know, like printed page reproduced there. So cool. He had such a good grasp, text of doing like this lighting. You know, it looked it looked. It looked organic, like that looks like a it looks like a face that's melting off of its skull. But it, you know, you get like a real sense of light and form. There's, there's like when you're a kid and it's like here, light this ball, right? We all do it wrong actually because it's it feels counterintuitive. the The darkest part is the part that touches the light. Like when light shines on something, the darkest part is like right next to the light and then it blends and that is a hard concept to figure out like you have to be very observant to figure that out and frankly that's why you have like a new Adams or, or like somebody in a mentorship position to like teach you that stuff yeah it just just that other level level of seeing look at this shit <laughs> I mean that's this a, is what you need if you're going after saber tooth that's a car Sarah. transmission <laughs> be funny if that's really what he's looking at yeah his uh his psychic sells him out that's what's going on here i guess the saber tooth's an assassin at this point uh you know in the storyline that's what he does is uh basically a high-powered hitman but you even see that rendering like on knuckles and stuff just going overboard sam keith you know i'd see little bits of that there was like this alternative uh school and i would lump all these people together and a lot of them for some reason would do those gigantic upper bodies which yeah. They were just divorced from me. from the the Kirby storytelling. Like it was just like let's let's bring some new. Mile High Comics has a, had a California store. I didn't realize that. Oh, at East Catella. So so I mean that's that's you know that's Disneyland. That's that's Rob Liefeld's Extreme Studios. Yep. And in case you don't know, this is an X book. We'll position him in that whenever we put the uh, the bomb next to his heart because this. Mech dude, what is this character design? Tribune. It's almost as bad as Platoon from that J. Lee Spider-Man comic. <laughs> it really is. And uh, the, the reason is they want him to go kill Mystique. So there you go. This is another snapshot of a time period as the heavy hitters line. Yes. One of, uh, I guess, Marvel's attempt at an answer to, uh, to Image Comics. And Travis Charest, very young Travis Charest and Michael Golden with pointy toes. I think those shoes are very strange. I like Michael Golden, but what the heck's going on with those that shoes? funny, man. These are like footy pajamas. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I like that uh, Tex would also paint covers. He yeah. A couple of, like a cool Shadowhawk cover. This was the era, too, man, where he did the public enemy, last like, great public enemy album, Music in Our Mess Age uh, album cover, man, which is the exact kind of same style, same era. I had no idea that he did that. Comic. Oh, it's so good. Uh, there's your nice, cool lighting on your face, which, again, every time you see a face, you're going to see some kind of interesting lighting. I used to see guys would have, like, uh, they would do models of that. Like, they would just have, like, ten, ten faces on a page, and it'd be, like, all different lighting stuff. Yeah. That was I, a big thing. You're going to see almost no backgrounds in this <laughs> motherfucker. Like, it's it's amazing. Like, I, as a kid, I never noticed that kind of shit, really. Uh, but it's, like, all, like, this guy likes drawing figures, these are probably traced off shits, man, yes. to just, like, get that out of the way really quick. But he likes, you know, wants to draw his girlfriend a bunch. Look stuff. at the storytelling here. He's being run over by this car and then, like, coming out of the glove compartment. <laughs> it's <laughs> Looney Tunes, man. It feels like they're laying this stuff down as fast as they can. Yeah, and, and, and you're going to see, like, his fetishization catches up to That's him. That's pretty fun. The car running off of an overpass and just aims straight down at the road. Yeah, another little trace, I'm sure. Uh, but the art, he, he starts to powder out, man. The art is going to powder. Yeah, you get assistance. This one, uh, Michael Bear is your assistant here. I think by the time we get to the end, we're going to have um, somebody else doing backgrounds. And uh, Paris is where they're heading. So uh, That shit cray. A little, uh, little hint spray painted on his wall. A lingering ninja from earlier that was trying to kill him takes him out with one punch. Look at this. Like, 
It doesn't even make sense, the shape of that arm. It's a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> it goes from neck to waist. Uh, like, when we interviewed uh, Kosada, he was talking about, like, sending his ninjack pages to Alex Toth and stuff. <laughs> and, and what he was saying, he's like, you know, if you wanted to make the big bucks in the 90s, you had to draw over-the-top style. And, like, I just never thought of this as, like, over-the-top style. But, like, that's, I mean, that is what it is, absolutely. Totally. But I, I think the fact that it was, like, conscious to these guys. Like, I, I, I guess I thought it was just maybe their natural style. But it's like, no, it's, like, commercially motivated. Yeah, it's... I'm glad you say it, Ed, because it does make a little bit more sense for something like this. But this was what was rewarded, you know? I mean, about this time, you know, Image is, is coming to him and being like, draw a union for us. Totally. And anybody who had an interesting style that was divorced from house style, like, they they had their cup of coffee at the very least at Image. Uh, also, a lot of, like, uh, the torture. Like, let's see some angst. Let's oh, see yeah. some anguish in that face. A lot of teeth in that I, mouth. I mean, I mean, that's that's the, the face from the... the Ghost Rider image is, we showed earlier. Is. That's the face you make whenever your flesh burns off to yeah. a fiery skull. It's so absurd and over the top. And, you know, to your point on... Uh, oh, and Wolverine. That's how you goose some numbers is bring Wolverine into it. Claws pop for not a lot of reason, but uh, he's there to have dinner with Mystique, throws the flowers aside, pops the claws. Good uh, good setup for our next issue, of course. And there's your bat, there's your assist artist for this issue what contributing his pinup. But uh, you mentioned, you know, how fast... This seems to be going, right? No backgrounds, bring in an assistant. That's what you do in, in this industry if it's like we're selling hundreds of thousands of copies of books. So the more you can put out, the more money you can make money right now. And, and, and it is a bubble, and they're all conscious of that. And there were the few times where things would uh, go beyond the solicitation, have to be resolicited, and the numbers would drastically drop off in the oh, multitudes yeah. of, of sometimes hundreds of thousands. So it's like you got to hit your marks if you want to basically exploit the market. Mystique shape shift, shifting. But you you see the everything smoothing out a lot, man. Like the assistants de definitely doing a lot more work, man, because you're not seeing that scratchy text line. Also, uh, super glossy paper. Yeah. When I was looking at different texts this week, and I was trying to figure out something to bring on and kind of look at, uh, I, I, part of the reason I picked this is because it's that coated paper, and it really shows off like the amount of hatching. You know, they're fine lines. A lot of this stuff that he's putting on, like the shading on the faces. Yeah. And a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And it shows off on the coated paper as opposed to, uh, you know, some of the newsprint and stuff. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make. Jim Rugg and Ed Piscor are lifelong cartoonists with a heck of a bibliography. And March is Cartoonist Kayfabe Month at the comic shops. Jim Rugg is going to be presenting you, Hulk Grand Design Monster, at the end of March. And Ed Piscor is going to be bringing you uh, Red Room Trigger Warnings issue number one. Um, on March 9th, High Octane Incredible Hulk comics distilling down the history of the Incredible Hulk into two solid 40 page comics coming month after month. Uh, this will be coming out in April Inc Incredible Hulk Grand Design Madness. These are the variant covers to go along with Hulk Grand Design. Uh, the first run, the Ed Piscor, the Marcos Martin, the Peach Momoko, got this uh, Jeff Darrow cover that's going to come with the second issue. And Jim, you've yet to to print me up uh, the Ed McGinnis variant cover that's coming up with that next one. Coming soon. <laughs> Red Room Trigger Warnings, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. Uh, first issue coming out, like I said, March 9th. And these are the additional covers uh, to go along with that. The Jim Rugg, By Way of Robert Crumb, Peach Momoko, and the Eddie P variant. Going to be coming out on a monthly basis, completely self-contained. And uh, Rising Tide raises all ships, and we have other books in print at the moment. The Breast of Jim's bibliography that you could get on Amazon or at a good comic shop today. Plain Jane's Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, collecting all of his uh, image comics uh, versions of Street Angel. Uh, family Tree that are out in the wild, the box sets and individual issues, so they are no longer $200 on eBay and Amazon any anymore. WYSIWYG, still in print. Portrait of a Serial Hacker, get your hands on that. And the Grand Design that started them all, X-Men Grand Design, three volumes of that that you can get easily at uh, any good comic shop or on Amazon. And there is also an Omnibus that is out of print, uh, but you might be able to find it in the wild here and there. I was out at the flea market recently, saw a copy. Now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. That like Ghost Rider and Punisher War Journal. <laughs> Clyde the Glide. There you go. <laughs> with, his, with his hairline. I mean, it's raw. 
you know, that's so raw. That looks like just a giant fat brush and maybe with some white media going back in to do your lights. I saw this uh, I saw this um, video on YouTube of Neil Adams drawing Dead Man, and, and he just goes in there with this, like, big fat black to start, like, just puts in all the black areas and then starts to, like, pen the rest. But you would never know it when you see the final, but it adds to that organicness and, and like, just the... the um, craziness of the of the of the shape like the sort of matter of factness of it right i wonder um, i think steve Bissett mentioned that he works that way where he'll go in and, and do sort of the heavy black spotting first and then yeah. come back in with more detail which kind of makes sense i feel like painters work that way you know you work from big to small just a crazy distortion of your of your figure but I dug this stuff back then, and I wasn't it's, alone. I mean, this a book big sold Wolverine. a bunch. It is a big Wolverine. Yeah, he, he would draw Wolverine that, one, looked totally like uh, Clint Eastwood, although that's the worst example ever of it, and then also looked like he was about six foot eight, Just giant. I like his Wolverine issues a lot. Hey, speaking of, uh, you know, we've been looking at all those fine lines for hatching and face shadows. It's gone. It is out the, out the window. And that looks like that's only put together with, like, a big, thick, chunky brush. Yeah. Oh, some early Joe Mad. Yeah, he even got to sign that advertising art. You don't really see that. Great at the double lighting, though. And, you know, you mentioned uh, Jay Lee and those Spider-Mans. I think you see that as you see, like, there's a lot of silhouettes sprinkled throughout here. Maybe a little bit fewer than the Jay Lee Spider-Man we looked at, but still a lot of silhouettes. And I think that's always a sign of, like, silhouettes are quicker to draw than, than full renderings. So that's usually a sign, I think, that you are moving fast. Last issue, we had the great ending of, like, Wolverine's here and Claw's out ready to fight. There's nothing here. Yeah, somebody got a diploma. <laughs> yeah. Somebody got an employee of the month at the, at the, at the bank. Yeah, so uh, if they're, you know, for, for anybody keeping track of the story at home, Sabretooth does want to get back to the person who put the explosive device in his body and uh, take care of that. At least take that guy with him if he's going to die. Interesting that he was a breakout character, and you know he's a villain and get, gets his own miniseries. Like when was that done before a Joker in the seventies or something? Yeah, that was the thing. Going back to this this week, it really doesn't feel like like what did anybody think? Like one saber tooth looks really dumb. Cost you know like he's just I don't know what you do with this character. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's weird that he would get this kind of marquee treatment. It's just yeah, it's the more we, well. I mean, I was a kid. I was super young then, and he was a hot character. Yeah, I I, I recognize that, but it's just this odd. It's hard to position him into any kind of story that I would think has a long life. Steve uh, Biasi is your background credit as background artist, and, and I do think Steve Biasi did far more than background. I wonder if he's just going in and splattering paint because this is his Jackson Pollock uh, cause, role. Because that's not Texera. Like, I don't think he d did that kind of feathering. We haven't seen evidence of that anywhere. But, but you know, the text did that, for sure. Yeah, that looks right. So this guy's putting hands, you know, this guy's putting hands, like, you know, that that's probably not Texiera. Once again, love the giant oversized gun. You are already in some sort of super high-tech battle mech suit, but you also need the uh, the car-sized gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the, not the early 90s without that gun. That's goddamn right. And speaking of dudes being tall, Sabretooth, nine feet tall in this Love panel? it. Love it. Ooh, I still got my enforcer, but my cat bit through the wire. <laughs> she knew the wires that weren't uh, connected to an electric socket somehow. I think she got lucky. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I feel like there are cats that don't know those wires. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Pulling out some wrestling moves. Going to do the overhead press. Oh, that he's holding a... I thought he was just uh, doing a Ravishing Rick Rude dance. <laughs> Throws him out the window, and you are right, man. This is definitely looks like we're just drawing this thing. And, but then you get these panels that pop up. You know, like, that's your careful rendering. Yeah, it, like, it strikes me. He just... He likes drawing, and he likes drawing what he likes drawing. He likes drawing faces. He likes drawing double lighting. What about this for a weird screen? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Never seen something like that. That's that's one of those bargain bin screens, like like those dot zips. Like they knew that they had you by the nutsack, dude. So they cost you eight dollars a piece. But those ones you could get for a dollar. Pretty good expression there. And once again, I, I will say that I don't think Mark Tex like inked that that one right there. Yeah, I wonder what the uh, how how that worked. If that was a guy in studio, if that was a guy continuity, like what you, the deal is. You can almost feel like the big black brush. That like feels right like there. one giant stroke. Yeah, yeah, I like that. We sometimes point at these guys that have like a giant outline that they use as part of their drawing, and uh, it's it's bold. 
uh, you, you get a mix of that. Even though he's doing all these kind of like hatchings, you still get like the gigantic, just heavy ink is running up the, the ferrule, the metal ferrule of the brush. He's, he's got so much ink on the page there. Yeah, just flowing. Was that Mark Tex back here? That Avengers thing? This one? I was thinking uh, Glenn Fabry. Yeah, yeah. But I actually think it might be a uh, knockoff, like a, like a third generation of those guys that were uh, popular in the early 90s. Yeah. Like Bisley and Fabry had uh, had some, some clones. Right. But I could be wrong. I didn't see any signature anywhere on that. And it wasn't enough for me to pick out. Man, Hulk Hogan, eat your heart out. That's way bigger than 20, 24 inch pythons. What's that smell? Dookie. You remember that? No Holds Barred? <laughs> no. You weren't a fan of No Holds Barred? I like No Holds Barred. I'm, I'm mad at myself for not knowing That's that. That's one part. of the famous scenes, man. <laughs> Guy shits his pants. Need to revisit that. Five year olds everywhere love that moment. And uh, you can get more Sabretooth and X Men Unlimited number three, although I don't think Mark Texiera is going that way. Right. Although I think he did Midnight Suns Unlimited number one. I think he might have done a painted story in the beginning of that. Uh, let me think. He did the cover. He definitely did the cover, but I'm not sure about interiors. So I've been wanting to look at this guy and his art for a while on the channel. It probably won't be the last time that we do. Absolutely like not. I pulled some other stuff, um, but I do think this is one that, that it's so, it must have been one of the biggest print runs of books that he did, I think, just because of the timing. And I mean, like, this is a deluxe format miniseries, Absol you know? Absolutely. With uh, a die cut cover. I got, I got my version of this. It was a four pack blister pack so it was like a produced thing mm -hmm. uh, at Kmart so how many fucking Kmarts were out there uh, in in this in this country in 1995 or whatever 93 um you know just 10 bucks for all four or something like that yeah he like I said he's done a lot of stuff I would always see like the uh the Vampirilla Shadowhawk crossover <laughs> he does the cover and you talk about disappointing whenever because it's so good like his Shadowhawk's the best looking Shadowhawk but he doesn't do the interiors, right? So it's it's the uh, the old bait and switch there. But uh, yeah, kind of a kind of a fun artist, pretty unique, I think, especially in the early '90s. Absolutely. Definitely going against the grain of that polished X Men style. Absolutely, man. Yeah, one of my favorite guys coming up for for sure, man. I'm good to go if you are. K Faber's like full of subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell to notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jim? Hulk Grand Design Monster Number no. One will be in your comic shops this month. If you haven't already reserved a copy, tell your local comic shop you want one and tell them to add Hulk Grand Design Madness number one to your pool list as well. That'll be there in April. And you can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to see how I make the comics I make, look at a bunch of my original art and all that good stuff. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue number one, hitting the stands March 9th. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Uh, every issue completely self-contained. It's going to be a four-month run uh, to complete the Trigger Warnings series of comics uh and every issue is completely self-contained uh you can read these comics at my patreon patreon.com slash ed piscor three bucks for the archive there more than 200 pages worth of uh red room comics up there as we speak you could get there by way of my link tree in the description below this video what else do we have out there jim subscribe to the cartoonist kfab e newsletter at the links below this video you can also find cartoonist kfab t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video it's another great way to support the cartoonist kfab youtube channel Jimmy, given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.